these footprints. Just how exciting is this for the world of science? It's incredibly exciting. And as soon as my colleague Richard told me about them in the summer, I was pretty desperate to have them on Digging for Britain because Digging for Britain is an archaeology series. It's about human culture in the past. But occasionally we make an exception for a really stunning paleontological fossil discovery. So when I heard about these trackways and Richard said, I think we've got the longest trackways in Europe, I thought, I really want to see them for myself. And I also want to share them with everybody. So I'm really pleased that we've been able to do that. And they are incredible. I mean, they stretch. I think the longest trackway stretch about 150 metres. So it's not just one or two footprints. I mean, you're looking at animals moving through the landscape. It's incredible. And you get a really visceral impression of these dinosaurs, of their feet squelching into this sticky mud. And then incredibly, those footprints being preserved for 166 million years. So what does it tell you? What do you learn? Because I'm like, and this is the, obviously someone who's not a paleontologist. I would have expected that, you know, these animals would have walked and, you know, walked on the, on the planet. So we've seen that's not new. What does it tell us in terms of what we can learn? It's really interesting because it complements what we know from the fossils. And we saw some of the fossils uh, in that video that you just that you just showed. And obviously the fossils, the remains of these animals teeth and their bones, we can now analyse those in increasingly sophisticated ways. So we can put back their anatomy, we can flesh the bones, we can predict how they would have moved. But what the footprints do is give us another line of evidence and they they show us how, how fast those animals could move. You're seeing something which is much more dynamic, but it definitely complements the rest of what we get from the fossil record. We're seeing behaviour. We're seeing a snapshot of behaviour. And I just love to imagine the landscape that these, these animals were moving through, you know, lumbering through, creating these enormous footprints and moving across a landscape which is probably quite... Uh, watery we're looking at lagoons and marshes and there's probably not any plants just where these trackways are so those those big sauropods must have been looking into the distance and seeing something that they could have eaten it wouldn't have been trees it would have been things like ferns and horsetails at the time so um yeah it, it, just to get an incredible impression of the environment too alice good morning to you it's charlie here go back to some Hi, of the charlie. basics for me would you so uh the size of these footprints, can you give me a kind of uh, hands demonstration? How, how big is the actual footprint? And I'm trying to picture the, the dinosaur as it's walking. Say you take that 100 metres, I think it's 150 metres, but how many strides? What's the gap between the strides as well? The gap, actually, the gap between the strides is surprisingly, surprisingly short. Um, and what Richard and Kirsty and, and all their colleagues, so this is a lovely collaboration between the University of Birmingham and the University of Oxford, what they'll be able to do is work out how fast those, those animals were moving by looking at that gap between, between the footprints. Um, but they're, they're big. I mean, the, the sauropod prints are probably about that big. And the, the megalosaurus, this, you know, basically the T-Rex of Oxfordshire 166 million years ago. Um, again, enormous footprints. And, and you know, you're standing next to them, they're kind of this big. And you're suddenly struck in a really visceral way by the reality of these animals that no human's ever seen. I mean, that's what I found incredible about it. I obviously knew what I was going to go and see, but I still wasn't quite ready for that moment where you feel like you're teetering on the edge of... Well, first of all, that depth of time, all those millions of years, but also I think is the closest you can come to really appreciating the, the size of those animals. It's like they just walked past and they were enormous. I tell you what, we have quite a lot. It was Gary, wasn't it, who, who was the worker who first saw them. And we have quite a lot to thank him for, because very easy, I would imagine, you're working in a quarry on a construction site just to not, frankly, pay much attention. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Gary was brilliant. I chatted to him and he told me about feeling these bumps as he moved the bucket of the digger through um, and, and realising that there must be something there. But everybody at the um, the quarry, Mark Stanway, his whole team there at Smith's Bletchington have been, have been absolutely brilliant. And they're all very, very excited about, about this new discovery. You know, they've been working hand in hand with the, uh, with the paleontologists and helping them to, to excavate these footprints. So, uh, yeah, I think, it was a, I think it was a great day for everybody when, uh, when Gary found them.
Um, Alice, thank you so much. Professor Alice Roberts, uh, presenter of Digging for Britain. If you want to see... Thank you, Alice. If you want to see more uh, on those trackways, Digging for Britain on BBC Two, the iPlayer from Wednesday.